In today's day and age, it seems like gamers, and I use that term loosely, care more about accessibility than actual video games. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice recently hit store shelves in digital marketplaces all around the world, and with it brought controversy that's all too familiar from FromSoft games, and well, challenging games in general. For people not in the know, Forbes put out an article recently, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice needs to respect its players and add an easy mode, basically showing once again that game journalism is a joke, as if 2017's Cuphead wasn't proof of that already. Forbes, a word of advice, stick to telling us about the richest celebrities and stay away from video games. It's a bad look, or at least stay away from freelance writers like this. I see a lot of people mirroring this mentality, saying that they want more accessibility in video games. I even got into a bait with a few of them, and one went as far as to say, and I quote, Real talk, people need to either admit that they don't care about others, or just don't comment on my stuff if their first response is to call me a retard, because I will die on this hill. Games are a form of media intended for the consumer, and when you're excluding people who might not otherwise be interested in your product, for whatever reason, and refuse to make a game accessible to people who would request that, you're a bad developer, end of story. You'd think if From Software and Miyazaki were bad developers, they'd suffer the same fate as EA or something. If their games were so problematic, the formula would have been changed as far back as Bloodborne, right? Maybe even Dark Souls 2 or 3. Anyway, this person went on to say this, Not all games are meant for everyone, but gatekeeping based on that is scummy. Games are a media form meant to be consumed by anyone interested in them. Souls can easily have a difficulty setting that doesn't detach from anyone's experience. Let me counter these points piece by piece. Yes, not all games are meant for everyone. And I'll touch on that later, because that statement in itself is not how you probably perceive it to be. Secondly, no one is gatekeeping anything because of that. Anyone is able to play any game. No one is telling you not to play Sekiro, or Dark Souls, Demon Souls, even Bloodborne. We are saying that if you cannot take the time to learn from your mistakes via trial and error, learn the mechanics, or practice patience, then these games aren't for you. Plain and simple. It doesn't make the developer bad, it just sounds like entitlement, and you are not entitled to anything. You are not entitled to a director changing his artistic design to please your need. When you start up a game with a difficulty ladder, it's recommended to start on normal for a challenge. It's usually the intended way to play. While playing on easy does not drastically alter your experience in some cases, it still alters it to an extent. To counter the Souls point, it will heavily alter any Souls game. Souls is not like Kingdom Hearts or Devil May Cry, Souls is the void of a linear story, unlike most of these AAA games today. The Souls game story is hidden in the world and it's made for you to seek out, or not. Depends on what you decide to do. Its main focus, however, is its game. If a Souls game loses its difficulty, it no longer becomes a Souls game, or rather the game that Miyazaki intended it to become. Miyazaki stated when questioned about the difficulty of the Souls game, and I quote, We don't want to include a difficulty selection because we want to bring everyone to the same level of discussion and the same level of enjoyment, Miyazaki said. So we want everyone to face first that challenge and to overcome it in some way that suits them as a player. Without the difficulty spike, these games would not have the FromSoft or Miyazaki stamp on it, which is indeed the sometimes brutal difficulty. To take that away alters the gaming experience and changes the director's artistic decision immensely. And it's wrong for you to demand them to do that. You are a consumer of art. Art should not be changed to fit your tastes. Now allow me to address the statement, not all games are meant for everyone. This is purely subjective. It refers to one's tastes. If you don't like RPGs, you don't play them. If you don't like fighting games, you don't play them. They aren't meant for you because they do not fit with your tastes. So why do we change them? It's a simple concept that people take offense to. If you do not like a game because of its difficulty or playstyle, then you do not buy it. Why would an artist change his art to alienate his fan base? Just because you have a problem with the game doesn't mean that others do. As for accessibility, all games are accessible to everyone. Well, besides people without consoles or console exclusive video games. But as long as you have money and a system of choice, you can play whatever game comes out on that system, regardless of how easy or how hard it is, no 
questions asked. What I've come to realize about this argument is it stems from laziness and lack of patience. My generation loves to be spoon-fed. They love things handed to them instead of working towards it. Now, this is not a shot to people who enjoy easy games. This is more directed to people who want harder games to be changed to fit their own taste. Games are not impossible. Hard games can be beaten and overcome with time and effort. If you have no time, then you should not complain about it. If the game is broken and that's where the difficulty stems from, then that is a cause for concern. If you don't have time to sink into a 300 hour RPG, you don't buy a 300 hour RPG. If you don't have time to sink into training mode for a fighting game, you don't buy a fighting game. At least you don't buy a fighting game and then complain about the controls. I don't understand why video games have this push towards them. You don't see this happening in cinema or literature. People don't demand that the artist change his story to suit their needs. They either do not buy the book or do not watch the film. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. This has been Grimtoki. This has been Beyond Animation. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn that bell notification on, and I'll see you in the next one.